everyone. I'm Tushar Sethi from Margosa. Uh, Margosa is a UK-based geoinformatics firm. Each of our team is uh, has academic affiliations, and we publish Earth and natural science research. And the hydrography 90M dataset is one of the products. Um, it's a 90 meter resolution data set. Um, it's a DEM derived data set from, it, it's derived from uh, Merit Hydro, uh, which is uh, an error corrected DEM. And in it, we've achieved a high network density of uh, headwaters which uh, with, with, a, with a, um, a stream channelization threshold that's set at 0 0.05 square kilometers. So that's in, in comparison with other hydrographic data sets, that's uh, a, a, a significant uh, change, significant uh, novelty and advancement, I should say. Um, that's especially useful in, um, in flow modeling, uh, say for catastrophe risk modeling, for for flood, flood risk. And um, why we did this, why we, uh, what motivated us to produce this data set is that streams and rivers drive various processes in ecology, geomorphology, um, hydrology, of course. And so uh, an, a high network density and high resolution product is well suited to these earth science applications. We've also filled, as I mentioned, we filled in other important gaps in the DEM derived products that uh, exist uh, that have existed from from earlier. So this is just a a, a graph illustrating some of the novelty. It, if you see in can't see the point of the the green area on top, that's. A, a, a more high resolution uh, flow accumulation threshold set at uh, 0 0.05 square kilometers. And so we, we're, it's the highest density of headwaters uh, uh, compared to uh, some of the benchmark hydrographic studies. And the drainage flow algorithm follows the concavity and convexity of the terrain more accurately. So you, you get a, you're able to get um, a downhill flow of uh, fresh water in a more realistic manner. Um, the, the, the other benefit you get out of this is you can do regional, continental, global scale studies, as opposed to ad hoc area limited hydrographic studies. And the uh, novel computation broadens the scope for remote and field sensor technology use as well. There's also the uh, advantages over spectral analyses, which I will illustrate in, in a couple of slides. How do I change the... Ah. That's just an illustration of the global scale basin delineation uh, against the stream delineation and sub-basin delineation in the in the inset of the the programming for this data set was done uh, using open source software and uh, various scripting pr procedures were, were conducted to uh, to uh, check for potential errors here's uh, a select sample of a visualization uh, of uh, the some of the stream features that sorry didn't touch anything uh, there are about there are over 25 uh, stream characteristics in this data set these are just six of them stream slope flow accumulation flow index stream there seems to be some magic going on. Sorry. I, I'm not even touching it. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's pointing. Okay, let's see. Stream distance, there's various types of uh, stream order in there, flow direction as well. Applications. Um, 
to date, we have used this data set in a few applications and we, we are in discussions uh, to apply this data set in combination with other environmental data sets. Uh, so I'm gonna just get into that in a moment. The we all know here. I think we're all all of us at this conference share uh, share a common uh, thread, uh, which is uh, access gaps in data and data accessibility. There's uh, problems with access because data can be proprietary. It can uh, you have limited natural resource data sets. Uh, they are, they may be fragmented uh, in terms of. Uh, and geographic or time series information, and um, the ability to calibrate and derive information from various multidisciplinary data sets is, is also uh, a problem. So what we strive to do is to provide everything in a cost-efficient and scalable open source infrastructure uh, that also allows for the uh, machine learning applications uh, for data fusion. And um, we're focused on allowing for a global scale, long and uh, short term predictions on demand at high spatial and temporal resolutions. Uh, most importantly, perhaps, is that we, we work towards providing open access data and decision ready analysis that aligns with the Open Earth Monitor FAIR principles. So coming back to, I mentioned earlier, I'd show you an example of uh, advantages over spectral analyses. So with conventional spectral analyses, you can perhaps get water presence in streams and lakes. Uh, you can get the time series for that water presence. You can get the lateral dimensions of water bodies, and you can probably observe certain biochemical phenomena but you can't get a basin delineation, uh, small and ephemeral streams, stream connectivity, and, and other features. With the Hydrography 90M dataset, we overcome some of those limitations by uh, getting access to basin delineation, uh, stream networks in high resolution, and from that we can derive uh, hydrological parameters like uh, flow rates, water quality, and uh, nutrient flows, and nutrient concentration. Uh, we can also model soil erosion and uh, subsurface soil characteristics and other hydrogeomorphology. So the list of current applications and potential future applications can be quite long. I'll, I'll just illustrate some of the some of the uh, ways in in which this data set has been deployed lately. Uh, the The key one for us is in public health. We're working with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation uh, under the auspices of the World Health Organization for uh, vector ecology for for disease modeling, uh, disease hotspot modeling, where in West Africa, uh, we're we are running a, 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 a modeling exercise that predicts the occurrence of the black fly, which carries a, a parasite cause, that causes river blindness. Um, so with in combination with uh, environmental parameters and geomorphological and hydrological parameters, we are able to predict the hotspots for this uh, fly, where the, for where this fly will breed, uh, so it's it's effectively a, a, a habitat suitability model, um, and that can be applied uh, to other diseases like malaria as well. Then the, there's uh, another uh, uh, exercise we're running with IGB Berlin in an academic capacity uh, on uh, on biodiversity mapping. And that project uh, concerns biodiversity loss and invasive species modeling, and it has applications uh, for other environmental management as well. There's some uh, discussions um, and applications we're developing uh, on uh, with uh, with various government agencies in uh, 
transnational threats and insecurity and stabilization. And these uh, involve uh, various military st strategy and logistics, uh, the uh, monitoring and mitigation of illicit activity, and on a legal side, uh, riparian rights. Then, of course, there's the uh, catastrophe risk I mentioned earlier, uh, flood, uh, drought, and soil erosion uh, dynamics. There's water supply and hydropower applications uh, as well, food security that, uh, that is closely tied with that. In academia, there's uh, pollutant and nutrient runoff. In fact, we have uh, another paper uh, done prior to this uh, uh, data set being published. Uh, was It was uh, on, uh, on modeling um, nitrogen and phosphorus concentrations in water. But this, this data set uh, complements that exercise in, in a very nice way. Um, what else is that? There's, there's also uh, applications in uh, forestry, in shrimp farming, uh, and crop yield and suitability modeling. So that's uh, that's the conclusion of my presentation. Um, Antushar Sethi, Giuseppe, my colleague is over here. He's he, both he and I are open to questions. Um, I leave it open to, to the floor. No, all right, thank you very much. <laughs>